So a big shakeout in the market today, down 3.4% in the SPY. So what's a trader to do when something like this happens? So let's take a look here at the chart. We'll cover a few different things here. But yesterday we saw that we hit a new high in the SPY, uh, the S&P 500. This is the ETF for it. And today we have a red candle. Now looking back to the left of the chart here, we don't see too many red candles for the last two months. So expected to see this kind of activity when we just rip and continue to soar higher in the marketplace and everyone thinks, hell, everyone can make money. Well, it, uh, today, today's lesson, today's shakeout is uh, a lesson that, you know, it's not always easy. So down 3.44% today, uh, a little bit off the lows, but uh, coming into today, you, a lot of people weren't expecting this, this uh, shakeout here. So uh, some people right now are a deer in headlights. Uh, while this is a meaningful move, it doesn't mean that now the market is going to completely crash. There are things that we need to take a look at and navigate here. And getting back to the question, what's a trader to do? Well, we got to go back to what we know and kind of found, find that foundation. One of the things that we take a look at is the expected move going into this week. So taking a look at Friday on 828 on the closing prices here. We take a look at the expected move going for the next seven days, which puts us at the fourth, which puts us to tomorrow. But taking a look here, uh, the expected move was about was six dollars and forty two cents. And we take a look at today's pricing. We close at three forty five. So we are essentially still in that expected move. Now, while today's move is uh, is a, is a pretty good punch to the face for a lot of longs we are still in that expected move. And that's important because when we look at that expected move, this is where the market had priced in. And it's kind of convenient if we take a look here, just happens to be 342 is where we saw the market bounce. Now, again, market makers have those levels. That's where the price to move. So what we do typically see on something like that is what's, uh, what these market makers do are auto hedging. And that's why we probably saw some buying into the close and a little bit of a bounce. What we want to look at right now is going into tomorrow that we probably will stay within that range. It's pretty typical, as I had mentioned, that we stay above 342. So going into a long weekend, what we're probably going to see on a three-day weekend is probably not much after yesterday's shakeout. And in fact, I mean, it's been a crazy market. We probably will rally. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, what we do here is one of the things that we have to take a look at and kind of consider is volatility. Volatility uh, at these levels and where the market has been is not normal. Uh, so this, as I mentioned, that expected move, this, this move lower was something that was already priced into the marketplace. So while it's, uh, it's a big red candle, it is, uh, it is within what we expected. Volatility today was bid up and was up about 26%. It's meaningful. What happens is that premium all around is going to be expensive. It's tough to do something here because what happens is if you buy calls and we get a bounce, well, that implied volatility is gonna drop and it may increase in price and it's gonna offset each other and that's oftentimes what happens. Uh, so the best thing if you're gonna play a bullish strategy is to do a call spread. The other part of that is now if you're buying puts, you're going to, again, you're going to go against the expected move and you're betting that the market continues to go lower. So you're buying an expensive premium here. If that doesn't happen and uh, volatility uh, eases, eases back a bit from this 33 level, because again, volatility spikes as we see here. Well, again, you're going to be sitting on a position that's a loser as well. One of the things that I came across to give an idea is uh, PBR. This is interesting because on a down day, this closed higher up uh, one, 1.1%. 1, 1, uh, 1.15%. And uh, the interesting thing here is that they were active in the September contract, which has 15 days to expire, and they're buying these inexpensive options here. So they're coming in at the close here, and they're buying these calls. And that's always interesting, especially on a down day. They're buying, uh, they're buying these calls, and the stock was up on the day. So it wasn't is that they were selling these or they're buying these calls because they're you know locking in a short position here the position that the, the stock on the day here was higher. So that's always interesting and then always catches my eye. So we just take a look here at the quantity and the bigger orders here. You can see all the big orders coming in and it's typically at the close here. Now, as I mentioned, if we buy calls here, especially these, even though they're 12 to 13 cents, 
These are, uh, these carry a delta of 24. So there's a 75% chance that these will expire worthless in the next 15 days. Uh, what I would actually be looking to do here is I would actually sell this call that's bid up here and I would buy another call a little bit to, to buy a little bit more time here. So maybe buy the September or even buy the September or the October 2nd here and to sell that. So if you bought the, you know, what it would look like here is you, you sell the nine and a half and then you buy this nine and a half here in October and you get that for about uh, what, 12 cents. So that's what I would be looking at because you're selling that closer implied volatility and you have more time on there. So it's a, a, it's a more structured position. It's something when you, when, you, when you wanna put a position on like something today and you're bullish and you're trying to structure something with options, which is what you wanna do. And you wanna be mindful of implied volatility, how much more expensive options are and still play a directional bet. That's how, and that's the best way to take a look at it.